Welcome to the Bridge Cable New Hire Training video. In this two-part video, you will learn all of the steps of a network cabling installation from start to finish. Part one of the training series will overview the entire process from preparing all the way to the end locations. Part two of this video series will then review terminations, patch panels, and finishing out the job. Getting prepared for your network cabling installation. Prior to actually starting your cable pools, you are gonna wanna make sure that you understand the type of environment that you are working with. Is it an open ceiling, enclosed, or will you be pulling cables in a confined location? Not only will understanding this determine how you are going to execute the job, but it will also determine what type of equipment you will need to use. For open ceiling, you may be needing to use a J-hook, rattle ring, D-ring, or even use of tie wraps. For enclosed, you may need to utilize conduit, the walls, or columns. If you're working with a confined space, you may need to utilize a cable tray, furniture raceway, or even power poles. It is also recommended that you review your map carefully. This way, you can get comfortable and know where your drops will be located. You will also be familiar with any specific labeling in regard to your network map, and you'll be able to determine your streets and avenues, or also called arteries and branches. You want to have a pathway for your cables, your trunk. So as of right now, here's my server room right here. And I am having a path come down this way. And I have an I-beam that goes across this way. Um, it's just drywall up in the ceiling, so I really don't have anything. There's no A-frame or anything. It's just maybe one or two pieces of I-beam. So I'm gonna come down here with my, and my J-hooks come across the I-beam where I'm gonna hang about 20 to 30 J-hooks. You wanna hang them about four to six feet apart um, for support. You don't want nothing laying on any ceiling tiles. But streets and avenues, we don't wanna go diagonal because it just looks unprofessional in the ceiling. So I'll have another one. There's another I-beam around here. So again, I'll come across here with more J-hooks and then just branch off to a drop, to another drop. You don't want nothing going in diagonals. I can't stress that enough. So I'm gonna have a path that comes straight down the wall where my MDF is. And when I say streets and avenue, it's going to come down this way. And if you come along this side, you can see the J-hooks hanging on the beam clamps here. So it'll come down and loop up and go straight across. But before you do anything, make sure that you have your safety gear, such as a hard hat, safety glasses, safety vest, as well as your steel-toed boots. The use of strength. If you have the opportunity, you will want to run a string line prior to pulling any cable. Some of the different methods using the string will be a tape toss, fish tape, and or use of a fish pole. Let's go ahead and review some tips with the team. You take that and go like that, it's called a half knot. And what you'll do is slide it over and just pull it tight. Hold one in, do another half knot, slide it over, pull it tight. Now at the end, it's called be a friend, leave an end. Pull the tape down like that and pull it off. This way there's always an end you can see to rip it off instead of sitting here going like this, trying to look for which way the guy's taped. So be a friend, leave an end. That's it. So if you already have an existing string on there, you can just cut it off, leave yourself a tail. And then to join two strings, you simply hold them together. And bam, you're ready to go. 
tape toss where you tie on uh, your string to your tape and you want to still make sure you get over top of everything in the ceiling and uh, we're just going to go ahead and throw it and we'll get her down. Labeling your cable. While there are different methods of labeling, you can use a sharpie, a flag, as well as a wraparound pre-printed label. Let's check out some quick tips in regard to labeling. Approximately 12 to 18 inches apart. Dixie standard is 18. That's how your numbers should look. You want to put identifiers under them. Six and nine look a lot alike. How am I supposed to know which way it is? Also, give two swipes on the back. When you're looking for numbers on the cable, it's got sides, so you might pass over. But if you see those two stripes, there's your number. Pulling the cable. Depending on your situation, including the building, as well as where your MDF or IDF may be, you will need to determine the method of pulling. It's called a coil toss, where you have a coil of cable, and same thing with, uh, with the tape. You're just going to throw it and make sure you go over top of everything. Ben here is using a green leaf fish tape. He's going to fish up the wall. Once we get it to the top, we will tie on our cable and pull it down. Like a lot of things in the network cabling installation field, you will need to also prepare how you are going to pull in regard to people. Your pulling team should typically include some type of a feeder person, a lead puller, and a puller. Although we understand that not every job can require three people. Let's take a peek into a few cable pulls. support systems. We pulled in about 12 cables to the small office. Um, and we're, uh, we're at the end location. We're gonna be putting our patch panel here. It's just a small swing mount bracket. And you often wonder how it's going to look at the end. So there's different ways of dressing in your cables. Obviously, you're gonna use Velcro for the final to make it look pretty. Okay, but to keep it up against the wall, um, we use things that these, these little things here are called D-rings. And you put them in here and it basically holds the cables in place coming down, okay? So we'll put maybe two or three of them in here, uh, use Velcro at the end just to dress it and make it look nice. Now there's a couple of different options. If you're in a warehouse and you have a big trunk, um, it's not drywall out there. Um, a lot of companies I see, and it's a no-no, uh, when to stable a cable, a trunk of cable, um, I've seen bridle rings being used, okay? Uh, it's, it's not good for the cable. It's, if you have these five feet apart, in a couple of years, the bottom ones are going to are going to, to, to break. Okay, uh, so this is why we use J hooks. So what you could do in a situation if you're in a warehouse and you're coming down a block wall, but there's a, uh, a column. Okay, in a way, you can just take your your you can use a bridle ring here. What you would do is just turn the beam clamp and just attach it to uh, the, the I-beam that's coming down. And it, it'll just sit in if you have a big trunk of cable. It'll just sit in here. And then you can zip tie it up there and just make it look pretty. 
these are J hooks for above the ceiling uh, cable management. Um, there's nowhere to hang your cables in an A frame. So what you would do is just follow the I beam and you would need a J hook, a beam clamp, and a little quarter 20 screw. And mount preferably at the top, give you some stability. Use your drill, the screw goes right in here. You can use a screwdriver, drill, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And if you have a block wall, then you just, the anchors you can put into the block. As you can see, my hole's already pre-drilled. Use a hammer. So we assembled two sticks already, and then we're just gonna stick the sticks through the J-hooks, run the string through, and that's pretty much it. And then you just keep following down. The further and further you go, you keep sticking through the J-hooks until you're done. Then you come back and you tie this end off so it doesn't pull away from you when you're ready to pull your wire. End locations. When you've pulled your cable to your end locations, you will need to utilize different tools to get them to that final spot, such as grommets, straps, buttons, scoop, caddies, as well as you're going to need to cut drywall sometimes. Let's take a look at the team utilizing some of these tools across various projects. All right, so first thing we gotta do is drill a hole through the top with this special climb bit right here. All right. Then you put this plastic grommet in there so the wires don't get chewed up on the sharp metal edges. There we go. That part is good. Top middle bottom. Alright, this is what's called a mud ring, box land, it's got many different names. Basically it's something you would put in before the sheetrock goes on. When you're putting these in, Everything is considered to center. So if it says 18 inches after finished floor, it's gonna to be to the center, which is marked by a little notch over there. So you measure up your 18 inches, you mark it, you put your notch up against your mark, and you drill them in, and you're good to go. And then the sheet rockers can sheet rock right over it. So you're good to go. All right, we're gonna install a Colorado strap. Basically what these are, they go on the two by four, just so you get a glimpse of it. They would go on like that. These straps bend, your cables are held in here. This way they're away from the edge. So when they drill in, you're not gonna have to worry about hitting your cables. So basically it's a way to secure your cables when it's coming down. So the inside of our wall will be on this side. So we're gonna install the Colorado strap on this side.
instead of just doing this, doing this, doing this, and throwing it up in the ceiling, copper cable has a bend radius of four times the outside diameter. So technically we could make this to almost an inch and it'd still be okay. But we don't want to do that, do we boys? No sir. So if we're gonna use this for later, say we're just gonna save it up there, make your little coil. And you can just take it and coil it up. Look how nicely it rolls up. Also, it'll keep your cable from bends, kinks, and all the other things that can ruin the transmission rate of your cable. Once you get it to your spot, tie wrap it, tape it, and hang it up on something. And then it's there for future use. You wanna make sure that there's no studs where you're gonna be putting uh, the caddy. So you use your handy dandy stud finder and we are in the clear because we were going to install right here find your mark 18 inches and it's it's great to have one of these tools that tra traces out the the caddy so you can cut it so you want to find your halfway mark 18 inches we are gold, and we want to make sure it's level. It comes with level, and you just want to go ahead and trace this. Always, always use a pencil. If you happen to use a Sharpie or a pen, and you didn't have a stud finder, then you're now left with Sharpie or pen on the wall. You wanna go horizontal first. If we do hit a stud in the wall, we can always go back the other way. Always have a piece of paper for your, for your dust. No stud, we're in the clear. Adjustments need to be made. We're good. And before you completely tighten it up, you want to take another level just to be on the safe side. And make sure you're level. And there you go, Level Caddy. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out part two to finish out your cable installation job.